We're here with Karen Harrington, who's running against Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, who's also the chair of the uh, Democratic National Committee. Uh, and uh, you've run against Congressman Schultz, Congresswoman Schultz for four, correct? Yes, in 2010. Okay. All right. Well, how's it going this time? It's going really well. Uh, considering last time we ran, we only had about five months to campaign, we brought in almost 40 percent of the vote. So our job this time is to continue to build that name ID, of course raise money, but reach out to those swing voting Democrats and independents in the district that are very unhappy with the direction of Washington, which is what Debbie 100 percent completely supports as the DNC chair. Right. Now, uh, has redistricting affected the district in any shape or form? Yes, as people should know, Florida gained two new seats. So we have the largest voting district in the state. So we shrink and uh, we gain about another three to four percentage points in our direction. So if you add that to our almost 40 percent with a low turnout in a midterm, we're looking really good. Okay. Well, enough about, you know, the race and a little more about Karen Harrington. Uh, what do you what do you consider your top, say, three priorities if you had a chance to uh, represent your district in Washington? Well, the biggest thing right now is the economy and jobs and to bring certainty to business owners like myself. Right. So being in business, for, we're going to celebrate 38 years this April. Congrats. Thank you. And we employ right around 100 people. I would like to grow and expand my business. I hope new young entrepreneurs want to open some. But we can't do that in this uncertain time of a government that threatens more regulations, more taxes. So when we're indecisive, that's why we're sitting on $2 trillion of worth in this country. So we're really not sure what our leadership in Washington and do, is doing. So I would like to bring my business experience, bring certainty to the private sector so we can grow jobs, and of course address the wasteful government spending, our out of control debt, and let our seniors know that we want to save Social Security and Medicare, not destroy it or push their grandmother off the cliff. We're here to save it. Okay, you mean, are you saying that you as a Republican will not be pushing grandmothers off the cliff? I mean, that's really, really disappointing. Now, look, I, I think. Um, uh, when it comes to tax policy, we talked to uh, Dan Balgino who's running in the Senate race in Maryland, uh, and he said top priority is reform the tax code. If you had to pick one or two ways to reform the tax code, what would you start with? Well, Herman Cain starts with his 999 plan, which some people make fun of. But it's really bringing a serious conversation to the table because politicians in the past have promised for decades to address the tax problem and never do. So if people want to mock it, they shouldn't. They ought to bring the conversation to the table. So as a business owner, I pay a high corporate tax rate. I would like to see that rate lowered. And to expand my business, People say eliminate capital gains, but I don't think we could get both sides to agree on that. But if we could get them to minimize it, make it more fair, then we could reinvest in our own companies and other companies. So we're looking for a fair tax code. So let's address Herman's plan and come to the table and work together to make certainty for Americans. Excellent. So have enjoyed CPAC. Oh my God, this is an incredible event. And because it's 2012, I think we, we've turned that corner and realized that our country is going to come back to us. And we're going to do it by strengthening the House, take back the Senate, and just elect a good presidential candidate that believes in the American dream, the entrepreneur, and uh, doesn't want to take us down that path to Europe. You know, America's unique and we're exceptional because of the people. So let's send more of the real people like myself to Washington that understand that and want to Any work. Any thoughts on military policy? Well, what's, what's a shame now is we've started to put down stronger sanctions. And I think we might have waited too long to do that. I think it's an approach we should have took a year ago. Now that they're closer to developing that nuclear weapon, now all of a sudden we step it up. These are very nervous times in the Middle East. We have to reconfirm our position with Israel, not like this administration has done, or my opponent, who won't speak out against uh, because she's DNC chair. So she has to, whatever the president says goes, and she stands with him. But we have to strengthen our relationship with Israel. Um, our approval rating over there with this leadership is about 8%. Sure. So we have to be on the side of Israel, not behind them pushing them to uh, sit down and negotiate with terrorist organizations. Um, we have to work with Israel and remind them we're here to get their back. Is it 8%? I mean, I like to meet those guys. Um, so uh, one other quick question. If you were uh, representing your district in Congress and you happen to be asked to be to, uh, the chairman of the RNC, how would you, appro how would you approach that uh, balancing act? 
Uh, well, first of all, I wouldn't try to take two jobs and misrepresent the people of my district like my opponent is doing. Uh, only someone that's as arrogant and elitist as she is that thinks she can do both jobs would take on such a position. I think you're doing a disservice and a dishonor to the people. Choose one job and do it the best you can, but don't uh, pretend to be able to represent the people of the district while you're traveling the country to raise the president money and pretend you care about us back at home. It's just a dishonest, and I would never take a position that I couldn't fulfill, and I, I would only take one position at a time. Excellent. Thanks for coming. Thanks for talking to us. We've enjoyed having you, you. and uh, enjoy the rest of CPAC today.